hope will prevail, but I'm gonna talk about how we endure until that prevailing point. We know the textbook definition of hope. It's a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And within that feeling, there are degrees. It, hope is more than just saying, oh, I think it's gonna happen. No, I look at it as the highest level of belief. You're firm, you're sure, you're grounded, unwavering, steady, and constant. We must be anchored in something. And without it, life can be unbearable and obstacles can be unsurmountable. In a day when people are hurting, backs are against the wall. People are dealing with traumas that have been suppressed since childhood. And I know within my soul, that's not why we were placed here on this earth. The story cannot end with destruction, chaos, and dismay. I've worked for Usher's New Look now for almost seven years, but I've worked with young people my entire adult life. Even when I was practicing law, I was here mentoring at Woodland Middle School. When I left law practice at Smith Welch, I was an aggression replacement trainer, so we worked with several students that we referred over to Connecting Henry. And what I can always say for young people who were either classified as incorrigible or what they say bad, when you get down to it, you have to pull back the layers, right? And they had nothing to anchor them, family, friends, their home, school, and teachers sometimes. There was no one in their life that was holding them down. They were feeling broken and they lost hope. They lost hope in themselves and they lost hope in those who they thought should have hope in them. Over the past two weeks, I've had no less than three young people either come into my office in tears or call me or text me because they're having major issues. One young lady who was given up by her biological parents at birth and then adopted at the age of three, only to be given away by her adoptive parents because they fell on hard times. And the person that she was given to subjected her to abuse. She even told me she nailed her to a wall and had her stay there all night. Eventually she was given back and put into foster care, aged out, and now she finds herself living with a foster sister who has a growing family and won't be able to house her any longer. And now she needs somewhere to stay and has no family to call her own. Another young lady who was in college, found herself pregnant, has a toxic relationship with her biological parents, had no one to call on, but now finds herself as a young mother, has to move, this is a young lady in Detroit, has to move, but does not quite have the funds to do so, and is looking for support, and reached out to me to say, hey, do you know of any resources that can help me and my baby find a place, because she had nowhere to call home. And then lastly, there's a young man who, whose mother sent him to America for a better life, and the relatives that she sent him to have now kicked him out of the house as soon as he graduated high school, and said, you're on your own. And you and I know that when you graduate high school or to have a diploma, you're not really qualified to do much after that. So he's in need of some assistance. No resources, no job, and little to no hope. All of these young people need tangible resources. But even if I could build them a huge house, and even if I could give them a job, and I had unlimited finances, they would still be lacking a major component needed to make it through this life, and that is hope. Even beyond these three young people, if we just look at the news, the news we know that hope must prevail. When a high school student shoots six people at 7.38 in the morning, unloading a clip in 16 seconds, or when suicide rates for teens and young adults are at their highest ever recorded, or when you send your child off to college, planning for them to graduate, and only you find yourself planning their funeral because they've been murdered at the hand of a friend, and when the president of the free world's tenure is so plagued with scandal that we have to question and really dig deep to see what are the real issues we're struggling with here in this country, and that studies show that 45% of marriages will end in divorce, we have to say, where is the hope? But we know that hope 
will prevail. Everyone is born with a purpose and with the isms like racism and, and sexism and the sides like homicide and suicide are cutting precious life short so that these destinies are not fulfilled, that is not okay. Hope must prevail. The anchor is a universal symbol of hope. An anchor represents that we should be steadfast, unmovable, despite storms, rains, and less than ideal conditions. You all know ships and boats, they use an anchor. They put it down into the, the sea bottom so that, or the ocean floor when they're ready to stop, and they pull it back up when they're ready to go ahead. Anchors also represent moving towards the future or a brilliant, happy life. When lifted up from the water of a port, it represents a new adventure, a new voyage. It also allows you to look forward to what's to come and to follow your dreams, goals, and aspirations. An anchor, it represents strength and security. So when you talk about hope being the anchor for life, it can represent rest, but it can also represent rising. Hope can keep us from drifting, keeps our soul at rest. It keeps us hooked and anchored into something. Our family went to New York recently for, for Henry County's fall break. It was my children's first time, and we went to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island, and we took the ferry out. And at each stop, the ferry would dock, and they would put down the anchor and tie the boat up so that we can walk off without the boat swaying. Well, when we arrived back where we started, the waters got a lot rougher. <laughs> and we were all standing, all the passengers were ready to disembark. And the boat, I mean, it was just swaying back and forth. It almost felt like it was going to tip, tip over. And I just looked around and I looked at the people and I was, this was brought to my remembrance. That nobody started screaming and yelling and panicking. What did they do? We knew the boat had been anchored down. There were just some rough waters. So we held on. People held on to a pole or they held on to a leather strap so that they could be anchored and grounded. And then I looked around and saw some people who were standing where there was nowhere to reach on. So when it started swaying and they looked that they were gonna find their balance, what happened? Someone, a friend or a family member or even a stranger reached and touched them and held them so that they would not fall. It's life is like that boat. Sometimes there are going to be some tough times that are going to rock you. But when you have something to hold on to, something that can anchor you and ground you, you know you can make it through. <laughs>